Ray and I started our channel about four and a half years ago, but we didn't buy any audio equipment until at the end of the first year. We kind of wanted to see if we were going to stick with our new hobby uh, before we invested any money in audio equipment. So our first videos, the audio wasn't great because it was mostly the camera audio. One of the first things we bought was a little plug-in mic for our smartphone. Uh, it did help, but, but of course even using a, a little app like RecForge, you really just don't get uh, the quality of audio that you should have for your videos. If you've been on our channel at all, you know that most of my videos are shot outside. Uh, when we were in Vietnam, the audio uh, was very difficult because it's just so noisy there. I do shoot a lot of video here, uh, mainly because it's got a high cover on the ceiling and the lighting is really nice. I think they set a world's record or something for a noisy environment. It's unbelievable. Uh, karaoke, motorbikes, you name it. And uh, they've got it. When we did start buying equipment for our channel, uh, the first thing that we bought that was kind of serious was a uh, video micro. It wasn't really a big purchase, but the microphone quality was pretty good. It really helped. We didn't have a recorder, so we just recorded into our smartphone using RecForge and then synced up with our Sony cameras. None of our Sony cameras had an audio jack, which was kind of unfortunate. An audio jack would have made things a lot simpler, especially since we do most of our recording outside. You really hate to invest a lot of money in it before you know if you're gonna stick with it. Well, 380 videos later, we stuck with it. Shot a lot of footage and a lot of audio. So now the big question is, is what do we do about uh, our audio? So after uh, probably about six months of using our video micro and our LG V50 with RecForge app, we started looking for some lavalier mics. We thought that might be the most helpful thing uh, to get us going. We could do interviews, uh, we could walk around and be free from being tethered to anything um, until we realized that we only had one recording jack and that was on the phone. So that really wouldn't work. We really needed something to give us two audio jacks. The first thing that I found was a recorder, a Tascam DR100 Mark III that I found on a little website in Saigon called Choto. I got the recorder for $200 and it was really worth it. It's a nice recorder uh, and it was in perfect condition. So uh, we were real happy to get that recorder. It gave us two places to plug in lab mics. So then, of course, you need lab mics. And we bought a couple of little Boya M1s and they worked really good with everything. You could plug them into just about anything and they'd work because they had a built-in battery. So they could work in a camera, they could work in a laptop, they could work in just about anything. They also could work in the Mark III. So that was our first recorder and a lab setup. We had the two labs and the recorder and could do interviews and just expanded our uh, capability quite a bit. Then we decided that we needed a little bit more freedom to move around with our camera and with our microphones and our audio. The answer seemed to be some kind of little pocket recorder. And Tascam had come out with a uh, pair of pocket recorders, one for a lab, dedicated for a lab, and another one that had an XLR uh, connector on it. So you could either plug it into a, a shotgun mic or a condenser mic. We decided to get some adapters so we could plug the Boya mics into the uh, Tascam and use it that way and it worked fine, no problem. The little Boya mics have a battery so they supplied their own plug-in power and we were able to get pretty good audio with that. Those little Boya M1s sound good with my voice and with Rhea's voice. 
So all we had to do was record and then go back and sync in post. And syncing in post is really easy, so uh, it wasn't a problem. I also bought a pair of Aperture uh, lab mics, which I thought were gonna give me better quality because they've gotten some really good reviews online. But in fact, they were just terrible. Uh, the audio quality wasn't that bad. It wasn't any better than the Boyas. The problem was, is it had a little rechargeable power pack, and that little power pack was real fiddly. It took two cables to hook it up, and then it also took another cable to recharge it. So, you know, it just, it just wasn't great. But the little Boya M1s had a little hearing aid battery in it, and that's all it took. And those things would last, they said, about 700 hours. So that's plenty. I just changed the uh, batteries about every two years, and I know I'm always gonna be in good shape. The little apertures, they uh, got zipped up in their case, and that's where they are today. The one thing that would be nice would be if our little Sony cameras had a microphone jack so we could plug some kind of little microphone in there to get uh, better scratch audio. But so far we haven't had too much problem with it and uh, we're okay where we are. Now we can do interviews with two people in it. When the lockdown started and you have a part-time job, were you still able to earn an income with the uh, part-time job? Lucky for me, I, I was still working for this company because, you know, education, they don't want their students to miss anything. That's why my English center has remained the classes for all students. We can also use our smartphone, our LG V50 with RecForge on it, as a, another mic if we need it. So I bought another lavalier for that, another M1. I have three of those now. They're a winner. And uh, if you get one wet or you break a cable or something, they're only about 30 bucks or so, maybe less, to uh, replace. I think I bought the last one for about $15. Don't quote me on that one. But anyway, I think I bought it for about $15, but it may have been 20 or 25. So later, we decided that we wanted to get away from the uh, field recorder uh, all the time and get something, give us a little more walk around freedom. Uh, the walk around freedom uh, would require us to have either a wireless mic or to have a wired mic plugged into uh, pocket recorders. We started looking for pocket recorders because we really didn't think that the um, environment in Vietnam would be good for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz consumer wireless mics. There's just routers and everybody has a cell phone. It uh, would be real difficult to find clean uh, audio unless your transmitters were right up by the recorder. And what good would that be? You don't have any freedom then. So the pocket recorders seem like they'd be the answer. We were real lucky a friend of ours was in uh, New York and was able to pick us up uh, a couple of the little task cams from B&H and bring them back. And they only set us back about 250 for the pair. Uh, we got the DR10X with the XLR connector. And so far they've been perfect. We've not had a problem with them. I'm able to use them with the lab mics and I think they'll work fine in the future for anything I decide to plug in them. I'm pretty sure of that. Then we bought a, a shotgun mic, real piece of junk. It was a Boya but it was terrible. The uh, connectors didn't fit right, had a lot of self noise, and uh, basically we've shelved it. We haven't used it on any project. The other thing, it's a boom mic, so it takes another person to run it. And we only have Ray and I to be able to do all the work, and we don't have that extra person. So the, the boom mic's pretty much set on the shelf. We did, however, find that we needed some kind of a mic for interviews. And we got a Boya uh, HM100 that was recommended on one of the um, other channels by, called Postcastage, I think is the name of it, um, with a, a gentleman named Bandrew that is the, uh, is the host. He said that mic was okay, and so I bought one. We tested it out, it was great. 
So we bought another one. So Ray and I both had one of those interview mics. We could either do interview, uh, traditional style, passing the mic back and forth, or we could both have a mic in our hand, either way we wanted to do it. It's great, works good. And it works great with the little Tascam recorders. The other thing we were kind of looking for was something to use for tabletop interviews. I've got some little tabletop stands and I thought that it would be nice to be able to do interviews with tabletop mics. And we were looking at something um, that was inexpensive, but good quality. And it seemed like everybody was pointing to the little Samsung CO2 or C02 uh, mics. You get two of them for about 120 bucks and they are really simple. It's just a little tube with an XLR jack. That's it. It doesn't have any kind of controls on it or anything. So everything's done at the recorder level. First of all, you get two mics for this price of $110 US at the time of the review. That's pretty amazing in and of itself. Really great price for a microphone that has a really respectable um, overall sound and a good feature set. So definitely something to consider, again, if you're, if you're working on that tight budget. The pocket recorders couldn't run it because they don't have phantom power, but our field recorder does have phantom power. And so it was real easy. You just plug those little mics in and, and use the field recorder for your phantom power. Well, we're still waiting. We haven't done that yet. And I'm not sure when we will. We're kind of trying to look at the big picture and see what will actually improve our audio before we uh, invest any money in it. The thing that's kind of got us concerned is 32-bit float. 32-bit uh, float is the new thing. Uh, you don't have problems with clipping and you don't have to monitor your gain as much as you do uh, if you're using a regular uh, recorder. We've looked at several of the systems that are out there from uh, Deity has a new one. Zoom has had one for a while. They all seem to be pretty good, pretty similar, but I'm not sure that the 32-bit float will actually give us anything that we don't already have. Uh, we really haven't clipped any video except when I've screwed up and set the recorder gain wrong. When I've done that, it definitely clips, but as long as I check the gain control uh, on their little recorders, uh, things work okay. And of course, with the uh, field recorder, I don't make that mistake because I can see everything on the screen. If we got 32 float uh, pocket recorders, then we'd probably want to get a field recorder too. There's several of those out there that would be in our price range, uh, like the uh, Tascam makes one now. I think it's a four or six channel. And also uh, Sound Devices has a nice one uh, that uh, is about two or three hundred dollars more than the Tascam. It would make a good upgrade to our DR100. I sure like that little DR100 though. It's been such a good recorder. I'm not sure I'd sell it even if I bought a new one. It's a handy little thing to have. So really what this video is about is uh, that I want some opinions from my friends. I think that um, what we have, I think works pretty well. I'm trying to decide where I could spend some money and really improve our audio quality. Do I need 32-bit float? I don't know. Would some uh, different microphones help? I'm not sure about that either. I, I know the lavaliers were real happy with the Boyas because they sound good with their voice. We'll just have to see on that. The environment that we record in is still similar to Vietnam. We don't have a studio. I do record here in my office. The sound in this room is a little reverberant. Uh, I don't have any treatment except curtains. And I think that's probably not going to change a lot. Uh, we don't really have plans to make a studio here. So most of our video is still going to be done outside. What I would like to know is if any of you have any great ideas about whether first we need to upgrade our audio equipment at all, or are we doing okay? Uh, and if we do upgrade, what should we upgrade? Should we upgrade on the recording side or on the microphone side? I'm not sure. If you can uh, offer any help, we'd certainly appreciate it. Just leave your suggestions in the comments below and uh, I'll get back with you. Hey, this is JR, the TechSpat OTG. Just want you to know I appreciate all you guys. Thanks for watching. And if you have any info for me, please let me know. I've got to do something soon. I'm also looking at upgrading lights and I may move the audio 
money to the lights if it turns out the audio doesn't really need upgrading. So again, thanks for watching.